In today's video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to get started with Microsoft Copilot when we're using the free version of Copilot so there is no barrier to entry in terms of monetary requirements so anyone can get started. And of course, with Copilot being a web application, we're going to do it on my Mac. Uh, but of course, Copilot is available on PC, on Mac, on iPhone, on iPad, and Android devices as well. If you do find this video useful by the end of it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to supercharge raise your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. With that being said, let's get into this. To really help create some structure to today's video, I've got a little breakdown. I'm going to bookmark all of these in the chapters uh, of this video. But you're going to see we're going to go through things like accessing Copilot and searching, looking at conversations and topics, different input methods, of course, chat history and plugins, which are really quite cool, analyzing things like web pages, analyzing a PDF document, creating a song, creating an image, and so much more. Uh, but the first thing we're going to learn is, of course, how you can access Copilot. I'm going to open up Microsoft Edge, and I'm going to head over to copilot.microsoft.com. From here, this is the basic layout of Copilot. Uh, but what I'm going to recommend you do is in the top right hand corner, there is the button to sign in. And if you sign into Copilot, you get more turns and you get a uh, more conversational history with Copilot, as well as a few extra features, and it can follow you across your different devices. So we're going to select on sign in, and then you can choose to sign in with a personal or a work account. I'm going to go personal. It's going to take us to the sign in page here. I'm just going to select on my account and I'm going to sign on in and I'll say yes, let's stay signed in. So it's really easy. All you need is a Microsoft account to get started and now you can start using Copilot. In the Edge browser here, there's actually two ways you can work with Copilot. The first one, of course, is the website copilot.microsoft.com. But of course, in the top right hand corner, there's also this little Copilot button that we're going to go through in a bit. The cool thing about this Copilot button is you don't have to be on this website. You can be on any website and you can still quickly access it by using this button here. But we'll go through that in a little bit. For now, let's go through the basics of Copilot. Uh, in the top left hand corner, you have the Copilot and the Notebook button. The notebook button is really there. It's in preview, as you can see down the bottom here. But this is really right now, I believe, for developers that want to have a lot longer conversations with Copilot. Uh, and we're not going to worry about that today. We're simply going to work on the Copilot option. Down the bottom, you have your little input, which is where you can have new topics and new conversations with Copilot. And you can start talking to it by saying, what are the features of Copilot? There was a few uh, typing errors there, but of course you can type into this here uh, and it will start creating some responses for you. You can hit the stop responding button. I'm going to let this one run um, just so I can show you a few features as well. Uh, so I'm not going to actually change around what um, what happens here. That was an error with Copilot. So uh, it started pulling an answer, then it for some reason bugged out, which actually hasn't happened before but let's ask that question one more time and i'll also teach you some features here along the way so if you want to select or copy something you can just choose on that piece of text and if it's something you've input you can use the copy button you can rewrite or you can use search bing which is basically microsoft's version of google if you want to get a copilot answer you can of course give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down say this answer is good or bad you can copy that answer. You can export that answer to a Word, PDF, or a text. Uh, and then, of course, you can share it as well. So even though it made a mistake here, that's okay. I'm going to hit the rewrite button. And I'm going to change this to Copilot. And I'll try to get the answer one more time. So it's going to start responding here. As the answer pops up, I'll also walk you through on the right-hand side here. There's actually five pre-installed Copilot GPTs or language models. Um, down the bottom, you can see your recent histories where you can, of course, edit the name of that, that history. You can choose to save it or delete a name change. You can delete it or you can select on the ellipses to share or export it. I'm going to actually delete it for now, uh, but that history does follow you along. Uh, what you'll see here is you can also choose the conversational style. So do you want Copilot to be more creative in its response? Do you want it to be a balanced or a precise response? Uh, and then of course, there are a few different input methods as well. What you, we saw before was I typed into it, but you can actually choose to add an image or even use the microphone. Uh, I'm going to say add an image and you can use to either upload one from your computer or you can take a photo. If I go take photo, 
it's going to ask to use my camera. This isn't that handy on a laptop, but if you were using it on another device like an iPad or an iPhone, you could definitely use that camera to take a photo of something and then ask it a question about it. Um, or you could use the microphone. So if I go use mic, can you tell me the three best features of Microsoft Copilot on the web? And hit submit. So you can, of course, talk into it instead of always having to type out your responses as well. Sure, here are three key features of Microsoft Copilot. AI-powered writing assistant. It, Microsoft Copilot, Copilot is an AI-powered writing assistant that helps with spelling, grammar, the, uh, the clarity, back. and readability. It can help you be more productive, get your documents and presentations started more quickly, and help you quickly glean insight. And then, of course, there was that little, uh, if I click on the system anyway, it will stop Copilot from talking. But because I spoke into it, it will dictate the answer back to me. And if I want to play it again, I can select on that read aloud. Now that we have an answer from Copilot here, what you'll see is that everything that it pulls from, it actually links those um, those resources, which are marked down the bottom here. So here's our, our six resources. One thing to note is that when we're using the free Copilot, you have up to 30 turns or conversational styles with Copilot. So you can, of course, ask, uh, I have a dialogue up to 30 turns here. Um, and then it does give you some prompts as well. So how does Copilot compare to other assistants? What are the system requirements? Or we could even select and show more learning suggestions. And this will give us more ideas. If none of these generated prompts are doing it for you, you can, of course, ask it uh, your own question. So is Copilot free? Anything like that. So it's really got a nice conversational style here. Um, if you're not wanting it to finish that response, simply select on stop responding and that will stop Copilot responding. Uh, if you want to start a brand new conversation with Copilot, in the bottom left hand corner, there is that speech button where we select on new topic and you'll see it just creates a brand new topic. And if you want to go back to that history of that conversation we previously had, well, that lives on the right hand side here. Now we're going to do something really cool, which is use some plugins. Uh, a lot of these plugins are focused on the US. So if you're using things like Kayak or Klarna or OpenTable here in Australia, none of these work for us because these are US based. But there is one really cool thing called Suno that I'm going to turn on. And you can have up to three plugins turned on at the one time. So Suno is a songwriter where you can ask it to create a song. Uh, and I'm going to say, write me a happy song about a smiling fox and this is a lot of fun so what you'll see here is that it's using the suno uh, plugin to start creating a song that we just gave it a quick prompt to it's got a verse here it's got a chorus and this blue line is actually starting to uh generate that ai song for us um and it's even got the smiling fox name if we wanted to share it, we could press that button to go ahead and share it. Uh, and of course, this is powered by Suno, which is a Copilot extension. We'll do that. I'm going to tick off the fact that we have gone through accessing Copilot. We have done a bit around input methods, which was, if you're not sure, that was using our keyboard to type in. We could, of course, upload a photo or use a microphone. So input methods are done. We've covered chat history. Uh, we've gone through search and conversational new topics, so we can tick off those two as well. And we are currently creating a song. I'm going to mark that as done just because, well, the song is loading in the background. Cool. So you can see here it says done. Uh, and now we can just hit listen. It goes for 58 seconds and let's give it a go. Uh, and then, of course, you can choose to download that song as well. Uh, so it's going to download here as an MP4 file. Let's hit play. In the wild. Where the trees sway, there's a fox grabbing gay. Pretty cool, right? Uh, within a couple of seconds and a few words, a we've created this awesome little song. So Definitely give that a go and let me know in the comment section down below if you think, if nothing else, that is just a great feature, uh, right? So let's um, let's move on. Uh, what I want to look at, and that was a plugin, so we can actually tick that off. There's also another plugin, um, which is called DALL-E, which is an image generator. So now we can ask it to do things like create, 
So I've just asked it to now create an image of that fun smiling fox that's having a party with its animal friends. And because we're still here in that chat history, um, all this is going to save in our chats under the uh, happy song about a smiling fox. And we can actually, what we're going to do uh, while it creates that is I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call it the smiling fox. So now we have a name for that chat as well. Um, and you can see here that in a couple of seconds, it has quickly created a few of those uh, smiling fox uh, images using Dali. And we can go ahead and um, hit the download button. We could open one of these up and then look at it in a, a larger format. Um, or you could go ahead and if you wanted to use some of these pixel art options down the bottom to edit it. Uh, definitely check that out, but I'm not going to edit that today. Just because we have so much more to cover with Microsoft Copilot. So the next thing we're going to look at is, of course, analyzing a web page. Uh, the great thing about Copilot, like I said, is in the top right hand corner. You can actually use this tool here to pull Copilot into anything you're looking at on the web. And you can use the chat, the compose, and of course, you can use insights. Insights gives you information from that page that you're on. Uh, and then we can just hit the refresh button and that will just refresh our conversation style. Um, and of course, just like using the full Copilot website, you can of course use it to be cre more creative, balanced or precise. One extra feature in this tool here is that you can add an image, but if you're on a Mac, you can also uh, choose the option of add a screenshot. So I'm going to refresh this new topic. And just to show you, I'm gonna go add a screenshot. It's gonna open up my snipping tool and it's gonna show me the page that I was on. And I'm just gonna grab this as a really simple example. You can, of course, mark this up. You can uh, save it. Uh, I can maybe add an arrow to it. Um, but I'm just going to grab that copy. It's going to drop it in. And I'm going to say, what is this logo? Um, but the fact that if you just, you're on any website, you go add a screenshot, grab that screenshot, drop it in, and start asking about it is a really, really powerful tool. Um, and in a couple of seconds, this will start have associated or started looking up what that um, that logo is. It does say it is the GitHub Copilot logo. That's not 100% correct, um, but uh, you can, of course, choose say dislike. You can give it a thumbs up. Um, being an AI, it does try to get you the most simple or the most accurate answer, um, but it's not always 100% correct. Let's jump over to another website now. Uh, and just with the theme of Microsoft, uh, I'm going to jump to the, actually, I'm going to jump to my LinkedIn page. How's that? Um, so this is my LinkedIn page and I am going to refresh by hitting the refresh button. Uh, and I'm going to ask it to generate the page summary of my LinkedIn profile. You are going to get this note saying that uh, it's not going to save the conversation. The answers to your question may contain information that is not public. So to protect my privacy, it's not going to save this information. So I'm going to say, got it. And what you see here is that it has started pulling information from my LinkedIn page. And we can now ask questions about the page that we're on. Um, it's pulled across my uh, personal overview, my content creation around my YouTube, my career progression, all that sort of stuff. Um, you could say, what certifications do I have? Uh, and of course, you don't just have to use the prompts from Copilot. You can ask it any questions that you'd like here. But any website you're on or almost any website, you can just open up that Copilot button and then you can start asking it questions about that page that you're on, which is really powerful because it, it gives you someone to chat with or something to chat with to check the information and, of course, extract um, information about what you're currently working on. Uh, there is the option of answer from this page instead or answer from the web. Uh, and if you're looking at something which we're going to look at right now, where you wanted to pull specific information, uh, the button of answer from this page instead is really powerful. But I'm going to tick off the fact that we have just analyzed a web page. And the last thing we're going to look at for today's video is analyzing a PDF. I have a PDF link here that I'm just going to copy and paste in. And it is just a Microsoft page uh, or PDF document about Copilot because I figured it was fitting. But what we've done is we have dumped a big PDF. It has 25 pages here. Um, and I don't know about you, but if you're like me, you probably want to skim through some PDFs, but you don't always want to read everything there. Uh, there is a button here in Microsoft Edge called Ask Copilot. If we select on Ask Copilot about this file, Copilot on the right hand side is going to pop back up. 
I'm going to refresh and create a brand new topic. And I'm going to say from this file, what are the key messages about Copilot? And then instead of saying searching from the web, it's going to say searching from your uh, your page for information. So it's not pulling from the web anymore. It's pulling from that PDF document that we've loaded up in Edge. Uh, and it's grabbing information about, uh, it tells you the key message about Copilot from this ebook series are, and it's giving us answers straight away. So it allows you to quickly analyze the, um, the page that we're on. If you wanted to, so it's given us the answers here you can actually tell it to answer from the web instead. So if you weren't happy with that answer or you wanted it to use external resources, you can select on answer from the web instead and it will start pulling information from the World Wide Web instead of just this page. Uh, so it's great that it gives you both options here. I'm going to stop that for now because I'm going to ask it another question and I'm just going to show you how accurate this is. On, on this page here, it actually has these six use cases uh, of Copilot in your day-to-day -day work. I'm gonna ask it from this document, what are the six use cases of how Copilot helps? So just because I'm on this page right now, doesn't mean it's gonna refer directly to it. It's still gonna read the entire 25 pages, but let's see if it knows that we are actually talking about this section here. And you can see here, it says the six use cases are automate data and analyze in Excel, which is tip one, efficiently use uh, Outlook, which is there, improve document creation in Word, which is number three. Uh, number four is automation in Teams, improve PowerPoint. And number six is improve data visualization in Excel. So instead of having to always find information inside of your, your documents, especially if they're really big documents, you can actually now ask Copilot to help find those information or that information for you. And then you can even say things like expand on, expand on how it improves data visualization in Excel. So it's not just about finding information, you can actually use it to extract more information and have a conversation and for me, this is phenomenal because 25 pages or more of, of a PDF document, that's a lot to read through, especially if you're doing things, whether it's contracts or just trying to read something, this helps you quickly find what you're after. And I can see this being a game changer for anybody uh, that works with documents. And the fact is that this is free and all you have to do is have the Edge web browser uh, installed is, is phenomenal. Um, you can see here it's pulled more information uh, and right now, because I didn't tell it specifically to pull it from this source, it's grabbed the information from the internet. But the first prompt down the bottom is answer from this page instead. So we're going to tell it the same question, but say answer from this page instead. And it's not going to look online. It's going to go back to that 25 page document and it's going to give us an answer. Cool. And now let's tick off analyze a PDF document. So this is a really long video, but that's because there is so, so much in Microsoft Copilot, even the free version that you can access on PC, Mac, Android, and iPhone, uh, or on the web by simply going to copilot.microsoft.com. If you like this video, let me know by giving the thumbs up. Let me know what you're going to use Copilot for and if you think it is a really good tool. Uh, of course, if you want to supercharge ways your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. In the wild. Where the trees sway, there's a fox bragging game.